Hi guys, welcome to We Film Things. Today we want to talk to you about five things that you need to know before you travel to the Amalfi Coast in Italy. So we're in a weird location today, we're on the roof of our flat in London, that's where you can hear sirens and that's because it's really hot this week and it's, it's so the only hot. way to stay cool. <laughs> so sorry about the background noise. What we're not going to cover in this video is all of the stuff that you can find elsewhere on the internet, things that will tell you to go to Vesuvius, go to Pompeii, visit Naples, all of that stuff. We're not going to cover that, instead we're going to cover what we think are the kind of top five insider tips because we've just been to the Amalfi Coast, so get ready for that. The first tip is eat and eat a lot. Now I know we said that we're not gonna talk about the most obvious things and Italy and food just go hand in hand so it is the most obvious thing, but we thought we'd just mention some of the foods that are specific to the area of the Gulf of Naples and the Amalfi Coast. So firstly, you have pizza in Naples. Now Naples is the home of pizza and the pizza there really is just the best in the world. So make sure you have some. Second thing is lemons. The whole of the Sorrento area is known for its lemons and lemon trees. Just have anything with lemons in it. So that includes lemonade, lemoncello, lemon sorbets, granitas, which is basically slushies with fresh lemon juice in them, pasta with lemon sauces, just anything with lemons there is amazing because the lemons are so juicy, so sweet, and just amazing. That's the noise you make when eating lemons. It doesn't make sense when they say life gives you lemons in Sorrento and the amount no. of coast. It just in doesn't fact, make sense. That, that just means winning. Third thing, that area slightly further inland from the Gulf of Naples is the home of buffalo mozzarella, believe it or not. So make sure you get some of the good stuff. I love to have it really plain in a caprese salad just with tomatoes, bit of basil, bit of um, olive oil. Obviously that whole area is on the coast so the seafood is amazing, it's fresh, it's delicious. We were lucky enough to stay in a place called Villa Walter where the lady who owns the villa cooked for us every night and she made loads of vongola which is clams, um, we had fresh fish. We just ate the best food and just like we've never eaten so well before in our entire lives, I we'll, think. We'll link the place down below. Yeah, if you ever want to stay there, because it was there. beautiful. And the view's incredible. Okay, so the second tip for the Amalfi Coast is to do everything you can by sea. So you can travel around the Amalfi Coast by uh, road. I wouldn't recommend it though for a fair number of reasons. Those roads are really narrow, so they're hard to drive. Secondly, they get pretty clogged up during the day, so you can't really get anywhere very fast. And third of all, it's really hot and you're not going to see the best of the Amalfi Coast. The best thing about the Amalfi Coast is the landscapes, and the best landscapes are seen from the sea. So what we did was we got a couple of private tours around on some motorboats with some other people, and that was really cool. Uh, we were on these really beautiful motorboats, kind of pootling, pootling around the kind of coast, seeing some awesome sights. We stopped off at some swim locations too, which was really, really cool. Um, I just got to see like the Amalfi Coast at its best. You can, you can also take ferries if you want to be kind of on a bigger boat, which is less rocky. Uh, or you can hire your and char or, sorry, charter your own boat. And I think that's pretty cool. We didn't do that, uh, but if we went back, that's what I think we do. Although I think it'd be slightly terrifying. We had a two-year-old with us, so that kind of determined our exactly. uh, modes of transport as well. <laughs> Third tip is don't expect beaches. So you think of Italy, you think of lounging around by the seaside in the sun, which you can do, but just don't expect sandy beaches. It's a rocky coast, it's basically the entire coast is a cliff. The beaches that are there are all man-made, they're usually quite crowded, you should expect to pay for them as well. You're gonna have to pay for an umbrella, you're gonna have to pay for some seats to sit on too. And you can only pay by the day, you can't pay per hour or anything like that if you're only gonna stop around for a couple of hours. 
So it's worth bringing a beach towel as well so you don't have to buy a seat. I would recommend going on the boats and going swimming off, off the coast and things like that because then you have access to sort of more private areas where you can go swimming rather than going to the beaches like in Sorrento and Capri and stuff. So one thing that we definitely learned from Amalfi was to try and stay away from the beaten track. So we did a lot of the tourist type things, which were we went to Sorrento, we went to some other towns that I can't remember the name of or pronounce. Capri, Positano, Amalfi. They were pretty nice, uh, but they were full of tourists, was being an additional tourist there. <laughs> um, quite touristy restaurants, very narrow streets, quite hot. That's good in some aspects because you're on holiday in other aspects it wasn't really our cup of tea one of the big advantages of going by boat was that actually you could scout out a quite a few places that were off the beaten track so we saw some really cool rock formations some really cool kind of lighthouses for example some bridges that people were jumping off and some really nice coves as well so what i would recommend is if you are going to do this trip and you're a bit more adventurous spend some time exploring by yourself so that might be getting a boat to a certain place and getting a scooter and driving out, or it might be going for a hike, or it might be just uh, hiring your own boat and going to one of the places that you went previously on one of your tours. Okay, so the last point I think is worth making about the Amalfi Coast is just how kind of inclusive it is as a holiday destination. So yeah, there are plenty of people who are our age who are going on like party boats and staying in hostels and stuff, but there's also like hikes that you can do. You can hike up to Vesuvius, you can do some of the cliffs and stuff like that. I'm just laughing to myself because we were not those people. We were definitely not those people. We, we were, were there with my baby sister who's the old two. People. Yeah, we were we were with my two-year-old sister who like refused to swim even. In the yeah. <laughs> so. But then, like equally, it lends itself to um, families with young children, or then um, older people who might want to have a more chilled-out holiday. And the other thing is, it's very accessible as a place too. So um, you can pretty much get transport anywhere. Um, you don't have to walk a lot or walk up a lot of things because there's usually lifts actually to kind of the higher levels of the cliffs and things like that. So it's worth mentioning it's quite accessible, you know, however physically able you are. Alright guys, thank you for watching this video about the Amalfi Coast. If it convinces you to check out the Amalfi Coast, please do let us know. We really love to know that kind of stuff and also let us know how you found it. If you have any other additional tips to add to our five, then yeah, we'd like to hear them as well. Love to know. And give this video a little like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one. <coughs> Just getting that sneeze out. <laughs> I tried to warn you before. Anyway. Is the whole time I was talking to you like... <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> poking you. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs>